After that, we also have to talk about the others, the other ways that drugs are given, all right? But we don't even go, I just quickly remember this too. They're here, they're, you know, they're also like, you know, intra-articular too, which basically means that you drugs, you can give the drugs in like joints. Like for example, you could give like a, a corticosteroid for your joints, right? So that or intra-articular, uh, this is for articular. Uh, so I already said articular, but there's intra-arterial. So which basically means you give it to the blood vessel, all right? Now, let's talk about others now. The parenteral, what follows? Your intravenous, subcutaneous, intramuscular, and intraarticular, intraarterial, all right, okay? And others, whenever we talk about other, we have to talk about a couple of things here. Here, let's write down here for others, all right? Would be inhalations, number one. What is inhalations? And inhalations, you can divide into a couple of things. You have a oral inhalations and nasal inhalations. There are two things, right? Because oral inhalations, usually you do it for, let's say, when you have a asthma, you need to dilate your bronchi, like bronchi dilators. Like, for example, what are the bronchi dilators? Albuterol, right? That's a very common one. You give that, right? Albuterol. Or even, like, you know, sometimes they give this, uh, you know, nitric oxide for that too, right? So basically for the bronchi dilator, now you give this, albuterol and it can dilate the dilate the, the bronchi so that way it, you know it makes the easy it, it makes the expiration easily for people who have a asthma right and that is the one way of doing the inhalations right and this does not fit the category of anterior and parental we usually categorize them as others but remember we also have nasal inhalation right and what are those nasal inhalations we call them for example like you know nasal disc discongestants and we can put it, we can basically, you know, put through your nose so that way, you know, it can avoid congestion for us, right? And so then there's a drug that oftentimes we give. What is that called? It's called oxy, right? Metazoline, right? And then not only that, if sometimes people have like, let's say, diabetes insipidus, right? Even in that case too, they give drug like there's a nasal version which is called decimal person is there too, right? They give that to that. And not only this, you know, like sometimes like you know, if you have a osteoporosis, uh, you know, there's a nas nasal versions of a drug called uh, which is salmon calci tonin. Okay, so this is a nasal way of giving. This is a nasal inhalations. All right, and. After that, we also have to talk about other things, like other, what are the other ways of giving drugs? Topical creams, right? And topicals are locally, because you're just putting, like, lo it's going to only have a local effect. So write down topical right here, all right? Like, for example, if you have athlete's foot because of fungi, like tenia pedis, right? If you have a fungal infection, then you give antifungal cream, right? So there's a cream. Or let's say... Uh, let's say if you have rashes, then you put like anti-rashes medication there, like for example, eczema, right? So basically, there's a topical cream. Or sometimes, let's say you have irritations in your eyes, then you put eye drops, right? Th th what are those? Those are those are basically the topical, right? Now, after that, we also have to talk about other things. Transdermal. What are transdermal basically? Transdermal means that you like, there are patches, like transdermal patch. You just put a patch, right? And they have they slowly get observed, all right? And over the long period of time. That's what this transdermal do. Like they put a patches on that, all right? And they do get observed, but it, it has like sl slowly uh, they, they, they work. And like for example, if you have a motion sickness, right? They put like patch on here, so that can avoid motion sickness. They do that, all right? So this is how it works, all right? So that's for the transdermal patch, all right? So again, how many things that we talked about so far? For your oral route, Right? For your enteral, we, do, we talk oral, we talk about sub, sub, sublingual, buccal, or also we talk about rectum. Parental, main one, intravenously, subcutaneously, intramuscularly, and also the intraarticular and, you know, all that comes there too. And other things that we also talk about other ones, like for example, like, you know, there's the nasal inhalations, right? There's oral inhalations. And we also talk about transdermal, right? The transdermal patches. We also talked about the, uh, the topical. So, and they are like, you know, like intrathecal or antiseptic, they're also there too. Uh, but 
but I cover the most important ones there. So this is the different way of administering drugs, right? Now, when you administer all of the drugs, then it's going to come to our body, right? It is going to, now, now what is going to this drug do to our body? This is why we have to talk about the pharmacokinetics, all right? But remember, whenever you administer drug to the patient, it's always remember, as I said, the property, the characteristic of the drugs, onset of action of the drugs, you know, whether it's convenience for the patient or not, and also economical viable, whether the cost of the drugs, or the, whether the patient can afford the medications or not. These are some of the factors, in my opinion, I think we should consider before prescribing any drugs to the patient, all right? Now, now let's say these drugs is in our system, right? Once the drugs in a system, what are we gonna do is, we have to talk about what these drugs like do to the body, right? And that is why we have to talk about the pharmacokinetics right here, all right? Now, and the pharmacodynamics here. I'm just gonna quickly like give all the pictures of the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and and then after that we'll go detail about it. Whenever we talk about the pharmacokinetics, we have to talk about the phases, right? And the pharmacokinetics usually they divide into like four parts. One is called, let's say, this is for pharmacokinetics, guys. What does body do, the, do to the drugs? Absorption. All right. Second one, distributions. All right. And third one, biotransformations. Or also we, saw, we say metabolism. It's the same thing. And fourth is eliminations or excretions. All right. So how does the drug going to get absorbed? Because drug get absorbed in where? In the vascular compartment, right? So let's say this is a vessel right here. So we said this is a vascular compartment. So absorption takes place here. And how does the absorption take place? We'll go detail about that. And after that, once you observe in the plasma, right? And the, in the blood vessel, in the blood, what is going to happen? Then after that, that is going to get redistributed in the other parts of the area, like other parts of the organ, right? So let's say this is the one cell here. It's going to get redistributed to this area right here, okay? Because there's going to be interstitial, and that's going to go to the cell, right? So let's let's say this is a cell. And remember, but remember, always you remember. You know, for drugs to pass, they have to pass through this layer. What is this called? Because they have this plasma membrane, right? And the plasma membrane. What is the most important plasma membrane? Those plasma membranes are made out of look. You have this, and this. What is it? These are. You you probably have seen this, like right? These are just water. This is a hydrophobic chains here, all right? And this is hydrophilic, and this is hydrophilic, which means water log inside, and this is a this is a hydrophilic side, and this inside here, look, this is a fat soluble, right? This is a fats. So if you look at this one structure right here, this is a one plasma membrane. We call them a phospholipids bilayer, right? So basically, look, one side of the this is facing interstitial, and this is filling cytoplasm of the cells, right? That's what it, that's what it, and this one that's facing the interstitial. And this one that is fed in cytoplasm, this is a hydrophilic portion, meaning the hydrophilic. Remember, film means love, hydro means water, water loving. And then this is this chain right here, the two more polymers, these are fat, right? And remember, they are water hitting, meaning that they do not like drugs, you know, that are water soluble drugs. You know, but then what happens? But if there's a lipid soluble or fat soluble drug, they can easily pass the plasma membrane. All right? So that's the reason why most of the drugs are designed as a fat soluble drugs or lipid soluble drugs because they can easily cross the plasma membrane. All right? And other thing is that other thing is that also the importance of having the lipid soluble drugs is what they do is that you know when they come here like you know they also go to biotransformation meaning they get metabolized and it can easily get excreted out, right? So when we talk about that, all right? And after that, look, after this what is going to happen here is that we have to make in a different color, let's say. You know some of the drugs come down here, right? Basically, because in the liver, this is where it's gonna get metabolized, right? In here, look, you have to talk about, let's say these are drugs right here, right? They go to the biotransformations, metabolisms, and become maybe metabolites, which means inactive drugs. Let's just write down inactive drugs. Okay, we'll just make this as, this drug got inactive, and then it become, let's say sad. It becomes sad, because it was happy, it was, about, it was about to do some kind of biological actions. It was happy here, but then it became sad because it became inactivated because a lot of enzymes are present there. Right? That's what's going to, and then after that, what is going to happen? After this, okay, and what's one more thing, guys? 
we also have to discuss one more thing. And then, you know, this, let's say, rest, some of the drugs got inactive, some of the drugs got, let's say, did not get metabolized, so they become, they did not, so let's say it went here, in the plasma right here, all right? And then here, let's say, after that it's gonna get redistributed, right? So what's gonna happen? But some of the drugs right here, like when it comes down here, the happy drugs, okay? They get bound to the plasma proteins, right? And if they bound to the, any drugs that bound to the plasma proteins, that means they're no use, they are not active on the drugs. It's always a free form that is gonna have a biological action, all right? Now, and that is also, important to know. But these drugs are inactive, right? Because let's say these are lipid soluble drugs, it got converted into water soluble drugs, all right? And we'll talk about the mechanisms of that too. If it converts water soluble, the use of the water soluble drugs are not, it cannot easily pass through what? Plasma membranes. So they can be easily excreted out from the kidney right here. So this process, like this drugs right here, will make, it will come here and you can excrete out here. So this is what eliminations basically means. Right? That's what elimination basically means. Right? Now, this is the bigger pictures of your pharmacokinetics. Now let's talk about what are the pharmacodynamics basically means. Pharmacodynamics basically means what does your drugs does to the body? Let's say drugs comes. In order for drugs to come, look, you have to make this something very important. Look, there is going to be, they're gonna see this when the drugs comes. First thing here is that let's make this as a Drugs need to bind to its receptor. Okay, let's say drugs. Drugs, what do you, it binds to its receptors. And the receptors are regulatory proteins, right? And what they do is that the drugs comes and binds to the, let's say, well, this is a receptor here, right? And then, okay, I'll make actually, let's make this a little bit easier way. Let's say that you have plasma membrane cells, right? From here, let's say, this from here, from, from the, your blood, basket compartment, it went to redist it, re it redistributed to other places, right? And let's say it went to one organ, just a one, and it went to one cell here. And one cell has this plasma membrane. Let's just make this out. And this is one cell, and it has this, and it has this receptor for this drug. All right, let's say this is a receptor. And what happens here is that when the drug comes here, look, let's say these are drugs, it is gonna bind to the receptor, right? Let's say these are drugs, they're gonna bind to the receptors. Drugs plus receptor. Right? And when the drugs bind to its receptor, it makes a drug receptor complex. Right? Receptor complex. And then once it forms the complex, it is going to have a different signal transductions, right? It is going to give your so signal transductions, right? It's going to activate the systems. And then after that, what is going to happen? It's going to have its effect. It is going to have its physiological effects, right? Now sometimes drugs can come here and in inactivate this. Like when drugs comes and bind to the receptor, sometimes it can be inactivated, right? Or inhibited. So if it's inhi inhibited, that means there will be no signal transactions and there will be no biological functions, right? So that is what's going to happen. So in a general concept, the fact that drugs can bind to this receptor, okay? The drugs can bind to the receptor. And if it's turns on, okay, we call them activators or we call them agonist. And usually in the pharmacology language, we use this agonist, which means that when drugs bind the receptor, it turns on or it activates the receptor, which means agonist. If this drugs bind here, that's the same, that's a different color drug, it bind to the same, like let's say here drug, it bind to this receptor and it turns off or inactivated or inhibited, then we call them antagonist. Anta antagonist, all right? All right, and then after that, it's going to have its effect, right? So, so this is what your basically what drugs is doing to our cells or our tissues, right? And this is what's called pharmacodynamics. In a bigger picture, guys, we'll just go in very detail about this. All right. And also, like you know, we have to we have to we have to also think about one of one of the factor here. Usually in the pharma the pharmacodynamics, this effect, okay, all this process, the single transaction, in a simpler term, we say mechanisms of actions. So let's try it down here mechanisms of actions and then based on the dose of the drugs what is going to happen is that you know it is going to activate the channels it's going to have it's going to do the processes and then it will have what effect and sometimes you know it will have adverse effect and then side effects is very very important side effects all right then something you have to remember all right that's pharmacodynamics says. and one thing that we have to now talk about is quickly here is that this is the pharmacodynamics we talked about, pharmacokinetics we talked about it. You know, 
sometimes, you know, you should look at this in a graphically too. Let's look at this, let's combine the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and look at the graphically in here. Let's say this is a percent of dose right here in this graph, and then you see a minutes right here, right? So whenever you give, let's say, a, intravenously you give a one drug, right? Intravenously you give a drug. It could be any drugs, right? So let's say intravenously, when you give the intravenously drugs, let's erase this part right here. Okay, let me erase this, guys, all right? When you give intravenously, right? Intravenously you give, what happens? You have 100% there's gonna be viability of that, right? As we discussed about it. Let's say 100% of the bad. It's like this. Like, let's say you give a, you know, some kind of, like, antidepressant drug. We could say diazepam or valium, whatever you want us to call it, same thing. All right, so when you give, let's say, when you give this diazepam, it is, if you give intravenously, let's say, you know, it is going to have 100% effect, right? The viability is reaches the system circulation is going to be 100%, right? But sometimes, like, let's, let's say, and, and this is phase, this phase right here, it is what it's called, like, because remember, it directly goes to the plasma, right? And then when it goes to the, when it goes to the, the basket compartment, this graph is representing as your, let's say, plasma, or you can say basket compartment, because this is the 100% viability there, right? And after what is gonna happen? There is, then after the one comes here, it is gonna start redistributing, meaning that it is gonna start going to the other parts of the area. So then, if we could just make it the graph, all right, we'll just make it this way, like this, this observed phase, and then this graph right here with the pink, We'll just say, oh sorry, we'll just say from here this drug, we'll make this color right here, it'll start redistributing other parts of area like this. And then it'll come follow like that. And this is the graph. We usually say like, okay, it went to the brain, all right? It went to like heart, all right? That's how it's gonna be, all right? Like that valium, but it went to brain, it went to heart. Okay, and this is how the graph looks like, all right? Because this swing that, this is how we get it. But what happens is some of the drugs, those from the drugs, you know, those, especially those sedative drugs, you know, what they do is like, they love those, uh, let's say, like fat-soluble drugs, all right? And then they, what they do is they accumulate those fat-soluble drugs in their fat cells, in adipose tissue. And then what happens is that after it's coming down here, right, you know, they accumulate drugs and then they, because this is looking at accumulation, it looks like this, because they're just accumulating. And this graph is representing as your adipose tissues. All right, so adipose tissue. Because there's less amount of drugs goes there and it gets accumulated or gets stored into your let's say, adipose tissue, all right? And sometimes like you know, if the adipose tissue later, it got shrink, then what is gonna happen is that some of the drugs, you know, can come to the plasma and it can give you some effect, like they call flashback effect or something, right? And obviously there's also, you can go, if you go to muscles, it'll look something like this. And this is represented as muscles, all right? And this is basically like, you know, how like drugs, this is just a different graph, so they may ask you, like, you know, how this, you know, drugs can redistribute in the different parts of the organ, all right? So, this is just a bigger picture, or like an introductory of pharmacology that I wanted to talk about, right? So we talked about what pharmacology means, we talked about what pharmaco, what are the nomenclature of the drugs, we also discussed about the, you know, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics in a bigger picture, all right? So, I think after this, you know, you know, what are we gonna do is that we're gonna go very detailed about the pharmaco pharmacokinetics, and after that we'll discuss about the pharmacodynamics also. All right, guys, so please, you know, if you like my lectures, you know, please make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, you share, and also next class we'll be discussing about the pharmacokinetics, all right? Thank you.